strikes. It's a very popular technique uh, for guitarists of all different styles. Um, rock and heavy metal guitarists often use them in conjunction with a tremolo bar so that these notes you play as harmonics can be bent up and down. Um, the common harmonics that guitarists use are at the 12th, 9th, 7th, 5th, and 4th frets. The basic principle involved here, when you normally play a note on the 12th fret of the guitar, you're actually pressing down on the string just before the fret, and the string is contacting the, uh, the fret, and you're pressing down kind of all the way. You can actually see the string recess depending on how high your action is. Um, so when you play these, you want to touch directly over the fret or later on at certain spots in between the frets. And you let go of the finger pretty quickly afterwards. A big advantage to them then is you can get uh, well, very high notes by doing that. And also the sustain typically longer than uh, fretted notes will on the guitar. Uh, also, once you play them in one area of the neck, you can move to another area of the neck. Uh, and they'll sustain while you're doing that. Versus if I play that same thing uh, with traditional fretted notes, when I shift down the neck, there's a, a deadening of the sound of the guitar. Um, so in example one, we have those common frets. 12, 7, sorry, 12, 9, 7, 5, and 4. And we can add the bar to those. In example two, though, we actually start to see what's really possible, even just on the G string from the 12th fret down to the open string. Everything that happens there actually repeats itself, moving between the 12th fret and the bridge. So if I went like this, I can go, see it's happening on both sides there. Uh, one of the complicated things about this is you see these, uh, the decimal numbers there, like 10.2, 9.7. Um, when you're playing, typically you're not going to actually think about those decimals. You think about it's offset from the fret a little bit. For example, at 10.2, I just see that as being, well, here's the 10th fret, and then if I just go on the other side of the fret, just off the other side, so it sort of still looks like the 10th fret, just a little bit on that side, and then the 9.7, same deal. It's actually about where you'd normally put your finger to hold down a note on the 10th fret, the 9.7. 9.7, that's 9.7 and 10.2. So right there you see this group of four harmonics that are all sort of surrounding the 10th fret on the G string after the 10th fret, on the B string after the 10th fret, on the G string before the 10th fret, on the B string before the 10th fret. Funny thing is as you move up the neck we're talking about the, sort of the mirror image that's happening. They look different there. There it's going to look like you're inside of this fret, inside of the uh, 15th fret, I guess. Neither one of those, they're not right over the fret. If we kept going, we see 8.8 .8 and 8.1. That one down here I see as being sort of uh, on either side of the dot. If you have a dot, like an inlay, on the 9th fret of your guitar, if you go between the fret and the dot towards the head stock, and if we go between the dot and the fret uh, towards the bridge. So right there in a very small area. We get an awful lot of harmonics available to us. Um, so for example three, we're going to talk about applying these in a, a musical context. Um, first I'll play in the twelfth position, a descending G major scale using normal notes, no harmonics. Now to play this with harmonics, one way we can do it is we'll go to the 7th fret harmonic on the B string and bend it up with the tremolo bar, release the bar, go to the 7th fret of the G string, do the same thing but we'll bend up a whole step, release it, go to the 12th fret harmonic on the B string, pull it up with the bar, release it, just go have a half step, and then on the 12th fret of the G string, we're going a whole step, so a descending G major scale.
You can add those high harmonics at the end of just about anything. It, they work pretty good. Uh, we could do the G major scale up an octave from there. Let's see. If we went to, I think it's going to be listed on that chart like 3.2. Uh, I just see that as being, well, you have the third fret, but you're just a little bit closer to the bridge. You're on the other side of the fret. There it is on the B string. I'll bring the bar down a lot and try to get rid of some of that pick attack a little better. And I'll do that same thing on the G string. And then on the fifth fret, B string. And the fifth fret, G string. A little joy to the world there. Uh, the next one's pretty difficult and the harmonics get pretty high, but we can do a D major scale. If we go back to that 10.2. And we bend that up on the B string, and then on the G string, and we go back down to that 3.2, there it is. You can't take these things for granted. So now we have some scales, you can create some melodies based on those uh, scales get you using the harmonics. Uh, there's a great coincidence about these harmonics though. In general, learning how to use these is kind of like learning the guitar neck all over again because there's a lot of places where the notes don't line up and they don't go necessarily just in order. If I went down the G string from the 12th fret, well let's see, if I went with natural notes, it's chromatic. It's just it's intuitive. These harmonics are based on something called the harmonic series, and the harmonic series is not linear like that. So we got so you kind of have to memorize that pattern on every string, uh, but there's some good coincidences. Um, on the frets, the 4th fret, 7th fret, 10th fret, 12th fret, and 19th fret, if you play a harmonic on any string on those frets, you actually get the same note that you kind of bargained for. So if I was jamming like in the seventh position, I went. I go. Same notes up an octave. Same idea here in the fourth position, I'll go. Uh, So you can do that trick of the 4th, 7th, the 10th, the 12th, and the 19th frets. The 19th fret, it's actually it's the same pitch, and the 12th fret's the same pitch. So if I went, that's just going like uh, 13 to 12, I could bend it. And do the harmonic. It's just that harmonic tone, it's not a higher note. Same deal with the... Same idea with the uh, 19th position. What's cool about those is that you can actually end on a natural note, like a non-harmonic note, that is higher than uh, the note that you played as a harmonic. For example, It really doesn't matter that much if they're in key. They're just so extreme. You can, you can always resolve it if it's a tension, right? Um, so, for example, four, we're just going to apply this idea. We're going to go to the tenth position and just play a little lick in G minor. We're going to go uh, 11th fret of the B string, 10th fret of the B string, 12th fret of the G string, 10th fret of the G string. Now, I could have done that like bending with uh, the left hand. Or with the bar. The bar gives you some different types of inflections. Anyway, the tenth fret is one of those lucky frets that we have. And if I go just behind the fret, just where I'm putting the finger to fret it, you get the same note. So if I went same thing. The funny thing about these harmonics is 
the higher they get, the more they turn people's heads when you play them. They, um, they think they're in the 80s or something. They're shockingly high notes. But also, the more likely they're not going to come out. So you kind of get to practice them a lot. So go practice your harmonics and bend them with your tremolo bar and... Uh.